Boop, boop, boop. Six o'clock, we're gonna start public area number one. Marijuana facility license renewal for Oxford Provision LLC <laughs> doing business as alternative essence. Anybody here from that company? Not that they have to be. Adam? I don't have anything for you on that. Public? No public comments. Close the public hearing. Public hearing number two, Oxford Plain Speedway mass gathering application for the annual Oxford 250 weekend with expected attendees of 5,000 to 14,999. Comments from the public? So I just wanted to make a comment that the police chief and I did uh, meet with a representative from the track about uh, just some concerns about uh, uh, the Wednesday, Thursday nights, and as far as the numbers of folks that were there, and I think we've worked out a good solution for that uh, issue, monitoring the numbers of uh, who's there and making sure that it's on the permit and, and those type of things for Thursday night, that is. So we've had a lot of good conversations, and I believe they've had a lot of really good conversations on keeping things smooth for this coming year. So. No public comment? Hold the public hearing. Call us like this meeting to order. Call us the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Action on the minute. one item if I may. So uh, as the uh, selectmen know we were working through a uh, hiring process for the fire chief, the worst uh, kept secret probably out there on the planet, but um, so we had gone through a hiring process but we ran into a snafu with the retirement side of things. Uh, given the results the other night of the vote and allowing the fire chief to be part of the public safety retirement plans for Maine PERS, uh, we have extended an offer to Ashley as the next fire chief for Oxford here. She's here just to say hi and uh, introduce herself. And her first day will be the 11th. So if you'd like to introduce yourself, uh, feel free. Sure. Um, hi everyone, I'm Ashley Lex Armstrong. I'm super excited to be here. Um, I started in Oxford uh, in 2009, so I'm excited to be back in the position as fire chief. Thank you very much. That's the only thing I have there. Business items 5.1, review approved marijuana facility license renewal for Oxford Presumes, LLC, doing business as alternative essence. Motion and a motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion. Put that into the table. All those in favor? Move. 5.2 review approved Oxford Plains Speedway mass gathering application for the annual Oxford 250 weekend with expected attendees of 5 to 14,999. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Chief, Chief. It's all good. We're working over All those in favor? Vote. 5.3 review and approve Oxford Plains Speedway mass gathering application for scheduled events with expected attendees of 1,000 to 4,900. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Vote. 5.4 Review and approve Oxford Plains Speedway mass gathering application for the 603 diesel event with expected attendees of 1,000 to 4,900. So moved. Motion by Scott. Second. Scott. Yep. In favor? Vote. 5.5 horses across Maine. Peter Seen. Just floor is yours. Oh, man. <laughs> ain't, ain't used to this. But, anyways, 
We're looking for that uh, one piece of land that's kind of landlocked over here. And you have to go back. The reason for it is one, safety reasons for putting on our fence. Second is revenue. That um, why we are looking for the donation of it is the fact that the revenue that we make goes directly to the uh, veterans and equine projects. And um, so, therefore, if you know finances, whatever, it comes comes out that it takes away from uh, veterans and other uh, uses. But um, yeah. <laughs> But that, by having that one piece, we can broaden our uh, fundraising ability. One, you know, for uh, all the way from um, showcasing businesses and uh, maybe again, directing five pound and do a fundraiser over there. But uh, it's also where we can put a uh, riding rink where we can extend our fundraising abilities and where a lot of lands are getting posted now and that it cuts down on our trail riding effect. But our biggest one is, is the safety part of it because it gets us off uh, rural road where the traffic is miserable at times. And um, buses can be dangerous. Any other questions, concerns you might have? So you just want to use it? Oh, I, well, the reason why we'd like to get a, uh, ownership on it is the fact that it would help us get grants and where we can develop it through grants. And it's what we're looking to do. So you're looking for the town to give you the land? To donate it, yes. Which, and the other end of it is, if we ever dissolve, you get the land back for whatever we've done to it. You know, as improvements and stuff like that. You have the opportunity to take it back. And where John had donated it uh, to improve businesses and stuff, we're probably one of the best way of promoting businesses through our organization because we deal with all the businesses of the town and uh, uh, we work with them and showcase them and uh, we can use it for many different things basically it's not to build up as big buildings or anything like that maybe our indoor ride rink that would be the biggest uh, but mostly for parking and um, one would be used for a uh, snowmobile park and ride, and the other it would maintain a opening for the uh, four wheelers to go through so they can get off 26 and uh, the roller rink road so they don't have to deal with that. And safety factor is a big one. Reason. Adam, is that with Smart 13 on the map? Lot 13 is the one he's referencing, yes. So, we don't have the authority to give land to anybody to select board members. In the in this park, this park is the one that we've been selling from. So I mean, you in theory, you select them with the economic development committee. Both have, they have the authority to sell these lots. I think you know for selling these. It wouldn't these. be the same as um, giving it away. So I hear what you're saying for a point. This seems as if he could come and address the board and discuss these ideas. Discuss the idea of using Skiavi Drive. And using lot 13, um, obviously interest in potentially having the town donated to as a nonprofit for the horses across Maine. Um, I advised him that's not a decision that the town manager can make, obviously. Um, so I asked him to come to the board and, and plead his case with you folks and see if there was interest or if we wanted to proceed or. What but isn't that something that if you're actually going to give away some of the town, you have to put that for town meeting? I think that that would make a lot of sense. I mean, I don't think we get the power to do it other than, you know, go on that way. No. It has, I believe it has to go before the voters. Yep. And, I, and I can ask that if you want to, you know, the town attorney, we can have a warrant article, but I think that the first thing is the board needs to decide if whether or not you think that's the right move for the park. 
be the business part. Well, I think there's a lot more information that would be needed. I mean, there's um, you're looking for it to be a horse park, right? Not necessarily just did a horse park. Did you get the paper that we wrote? Did you get it? Yes, I, I have it, but it's still not quite clear. I mean, how many horses do you even have there? Well, it's, we put on monthly rides, um, and it's sometimes up to 17, and then well, they're gone halfway through it. I mean, the day. Did you? Get this whole thing? Yeah. That's. That explains that, everything. That 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 you got that non-profit here, right? Well, we have this here. Okay, that's proven to us that we're a non-profit. And we're certified on it. This is basically what tells you all about the... Um, what we do. What we do. So I think that's something still that the board needs to talk about and um, whether or not, I wouldn't be, um, I don't think that it's something that the board can make the decision on. I think it would have to go to the voters because it's given, it's town land. Mm -hmm. This is something that maybe the board would like to have time to think about, revisit at a later mm -hmm. date. And see if it's something we want to put on. You want to put on the warrant or not? Well, maybe you could check into what the legality of it on how you go mm -hmm. about it. Be happy to do that before we make to make a decision. <laughs> on it. Mm -hmm. Anything to be able to work together and get to work this out because it's kind of detrimental to us. Where do you normally ride? What's that? I, I know you do some riding on the on the roads. Quite often. <laughs> That's how we usually go is right out on that land. Yeah. And I kind of hate you on the roads. So I've almost got killed. By it's dangerous out there. And some people just don't respect them, and that's where we can get it away from the main road, the better off we are. We always have to cross the bridge, that's a given. <laughs> but yeah, most of our summer ridings and trails and stuff, thanks to the local landowners, and local landowners and stuff, they've helped us out a lot. Um, But during the winter time, we're stuck on the main roads. Because we do a lot of it. She's been known to uh, walk 2,000 miles a year, so not many, but she has. <laughs> Henry? The first question I'd have that's not the uh, permanent housing for horses, is it? No. No, no, no. no. It's just to be used It's for just to use for recreational use. Maybe small nights. Yeah, an overnight as possible. Yeah, building to be covered. Well, we'd like to eventually put up a riding mm -hmm. arena, a big building just for riding, so we can ride when it's snowing. We want to hold an event so people can okay. come over and ride during the winter. Thank you. Thank you. The main purpose is just to raise money for the veterans and keep going on projects. When do you have to have an answer if it goes on the warrant? Hmm? When do you have to have an answer for it to be on the warrant? If you I think by the time we're done the budget process, it would be nice to have an answer. So let's set a meeting where we can discuss. Um, there's lots of questions we probably have. Um, stipulations. We talked about <coughs> stipulations of the town getting the land back if you didn't use it anymore, but if you've already improved it or potentially didn't improve it if, if you put up a building and it got half finished or yeah. um, goes in disrepair, then, then the town is then on the, the hook for the cost to fix it or get rid of it. So, um, just lots of different things to look at. Uh, yeah, I can say, no, we, um, find our organization being a non profit, if we do dissolve, supposedly, all the um, uh, lands and stuff, or or whatever properties of that nonprofit is to be donated to a nonprofit. But where, if it was donated actually by the town, they would be public legally to be able to return back to them. But basically, a lot of the um, buildings on it, if it Came to like a, a indoor arena. That would be a grant done 
project and therefore we wouldn't be even starting. Somebody else would be building it, I shouldn't have it. We went to the chamber and he said we could have a good chance of getting some agricultural um, grants. Yeah, grants and stuff. So whatever happens and if there, if we do have the office building there that would be movable anyway. So it's not like it's gonna be uh, anything detrimental to the land. But what the first would have to be would be just have to clear it and make sure it's solid enough to be able to drive on. That's the primary thing. Okay. Anything else? I'm good. good. Thank you. Oh, thank you for listening. <laughs> would you like me to, uh, I believe it's uh, the next selectman's meeting, the reg not the budget one, but the regular schedule was the 21st. Is that the next one? Yep, want to plan on me bringing some info back? Sure. sure. 21st. Okay. 5.6 solid waste ordinance discussion. All right, so uh, Ed is here from the transfer station tonight to discuss this. This comes back to the uh, discussion we had about uh, you know, allowing residents to be able to pick or do a swap shop. Ed's put together a plan and kind of outlining his thoughts. I think he's given us tonight a, a new updated uh, version of his transfer station swap shop here. I'll, uh, I'll let Ed dive into that. I also have looked at the ordinance for the uh, the solid waste ordinance. I've reached out to the town attorney on, it appears to me that the selectman might have the authority to grant, you know, correct, create a policy that would allow this without any changes to the ordinance. Um, so I'm waiting on an answer on that, and a, you know, a, a potential policy, if you will. So other than that, I'll let Ed take it and explain what his thoughts are. As I pass out the paperwork, um, DEP is, has a grant process coming up in a couple of weeks. And if I get the permission to be able to go forward, then I'd, I'd like to apply for that grant. Um, over $10,000, there's a building like up to Scott Sessions. We could get already made and put together for it's like $7,500. And then you put electricity or something in so they could test stuff. Uh, that's all there is. I just got a permission to be able to move forward with the grant. But if we do get awarded it, we get about $2,500. Just wrap the check. Right? Yeah. But I mean, you'll see on my paperwork that we've had a couple of townspeople write, write letters. I've got a letter from DEP, which is recommending we do this. It, it just saves all the way around it. Ain't going in the hopper and we're paying to dispose of it. People are reusing it. That's all I got. I mean, you guys got any other questions? But I just like to be able to move forward with that grant if, if I could. I like it. I think you did your homework. Looks good. My opinion. No, I, I think too. Where would we? Where would you get the twenty five hundred? You're probably looking at a ways out before yeah. that grant would be yeah. approved or not. I so. got a feeling it's going to be probably at least two or three months. So. I guess I'm okay with it. Mean, you look at your motion to let him at least apply <coughs> for the grant? Sure. I'll make it. Second. Motion and a second discussion? I just, Ed, you have uh, in there that nothing would be there longer than one week. Do right. you think a week is, I mean, not everybody goes to them weekly, so. I just figured that if, if, if you don't need more room to put other stuff in, we got put like blue, green stickers on it, we know yeah. it's been there a week. I mean, if, it, if it's something really good, maybe it can stay too, but that's why we did put the exceptions in there. So you know, in case there's a little, you know, something really good. One of the attendees are gonna yep. keep we'll, up we'll, on we'll it. Keep a, we'll keep an eye on it, and we'll know what stickers good for what week, and we'll go from there. I think that could be flexible. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's like the air conditioners I put in there, you know, it's, if we're bringing nice clean air conditioners in, the guys at the work, we're testing the work, we can put it in there, but they're still going to pay the $10 to get rid of it. Because that's taken away from the money for the town if we don't do that. All those in favor? Okay. Thanks. Keep us in the loop. Mm -hmm. 
5.7, accept the donation from the Western Foothills Land Trust of $285 to the Fire Department Equipment Reserve. Motion to accept. Second. Motion to second. Discussion? Thank you very much. All those in favor? Vote. Department and report. Fire Departments first. So the uh, acting fire chief is here tonight, Sean. He's going to discuss. The last time we were here, we did a thorough walk through of the building. Um, he's put together a report of some ideas and some changes that he wanted to bring to the board's attention. John, you okay if I throw the floor to you? And sure. You go from there. Uh, the discussion was had about um, removing one of the three ambulances that we have. The oldest of those trucks is a 2003. It's got 75,000 miles on it. Um, as uh, the town manager and I went through the capital projects, uh, capital improvement uh, future projects. This is slated on there to be uh, to purchase a new truck. Um, it's not necessary. It's not. Uh, this truck does uh, very few ambulance calls, um, and it's only in a uh, sort of a convenience role because of where it sits. Um, the two. We never use more than two ambulances. We don't have staff enough to use more than two ambulances. So the third one is really in, in a spare role. Uh, the agreement that we have with the company that we bought the two ambulances that we have now in the, in the bay here, um, if any of those were to have a long-term breakdown, they'll send us a loaner anyways. So this, this position does not put the town in any jeopardy of not having an ambulance. Um, ambulances, this is probably the best time to sell a used ambulance if you're going to because it's going to take about four years to get a new ambulance. So some communities are in a bind where they need a new ambulance, but they have to wait four years. So we, we, there's an opportunity possibly to, to find a community that is in need and willing to pay some, some money for that. I couldn't even begin to guess of a, of a, of a number to give you. Maybe 10000 could be as high as 20000 but it's really couldn't give you any type of firm number that you could get. Uh, and as we discussed on the on the tour, if we remove that ambulance, that also has a side effect of it allows us to drop the heat in that north end fire station to 50 degrees, which will obviously have a cost saving effect uh, on the heating oil. Uh, similarly, we talked about uh, the third fire engine here, uh, engine number four, that's a 1995. That has 117,000 miles on it. Um, that truck is sort of in the same same position where it is not used except for an, a, uh, a, a as needed basis, if you will, um, or a uh, reserve basis. That truck, um, maintenance-wise, costs us about three to four thousand dollars per year because we have to test the pumps on it, we have to test the ladders on it, we have to test. Uh, you know, service the engine, uh, those kinds of things cost money for the very limited number of calls that it does, which I have if you want to read those off. Um, it, it seems that there is some cost savings there if we if we remove that truck. That will not hurt us on our fire rating, um, uh, which I included in, the, in your packets. So, um, any questions? So one of, the, one of the thoughts I had is if the board is interested in exploring this is that we can post we could post vehicles for sale like we did with a recent police cruiser and some other things on the, that on the website on the, the auction website and allow allow bids to happen and if we don't get a high enough bid we have the right to reject bids so theoretically we could put the third ambulance on this web you know on the municipal bid is what it was and if we get a high enough bid we could consider, you know, bring it back to the board for you guys to decide whether or not it's a high enough bid or not, and decide if we wanted to do anything with it, um, or if the, or not. Um, but I don't, I, I kind of feel like no harm, no foul if we put it up for sale and uh, get a high enough bid to make it worth our while. Great. If not, then we'll use it for something else. So, is that something the board would be interested in potentially exploring? I think it's a good idea. I. I concur with my stipulation with the any monies that come from the sale of the fire vehicles go towards the capital fund for replacing fire vehicles. 
That's, that's what Sean and I discussed as well. I mean, I think that makes the most sense. And I think it is important to point out, though, is that getting rid of, you know, if, if these two vehicles are sold, that I think it needs to become a top priority, the idea of replacing them with, uh, I'm not high on the technology, you know, the term, but a mini pumper of some sort, which would be something that could be used to carry some water, pump water, but also get down camp roads and those kind of things, right? So Co Correct, yeah. Well, one of the, one of our needs is being able to have good access into the campground, uh, camp roads that we have, obviously a number of. Um, the larger fire trucks don't fit well down those roads. We often suffer damage when we go in there because it's too tight. And um, sometimes it's simple as some scratches and sometimes it's knocking a mirror off because of the branches and, and such as that. This vehicle would be a, uh, that we're talking about here, would be like a, a, a Ford F450, 550 type chassis um, that has the same size pump as the big pumps, but it doesn't have the same amount of water. The other benefit to that is it's literally half the cost of what a new larger fire pump would be. Unfortunately, those trucks are up in the 800,000 range now, and this vehicle is, is in the 400 or less, 3, 375, 400 range. I can support that. Do you know off the top of your head when the fire department budget is set for work? Twenty eight. Yep. You're looking at the calendar? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We can talk about that when we get into the budget. Okay. Do you want me to go ahead and list that on the at least the rescue on municipal? Do you have anything else? Scott. Um Yeah. Okay. I think you're looking at a pretty drastic change to the services that we provide as far as the equipment and stuff. Um, I really don't think that this is something that <coughs> we do in a night. Uh, I think we really need to look at the long term effects, if any. I'm not saying that it, it's a bad plan, but I don't think it's brought up a, at a meeting in one night we go, well, let's sell off half of the fire department inventory. I, I just don't see that as being a bright, because once it's gone, it's gone. Well, uh, if you recall, Scott, they were getting rid of one when we bought the fire truck. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, they had two ambulances, that ambulance was going on that one. That was in the meeting. And I know there was discussion of it. When a, pr a prior before chief for acting chief was here. It was several years ago that there was discussion that I mean we've discussed whether we need the third ambulance or not for several years, off and on, but and I don't disagree that we don't make a decision in one night, but I, I just I don't know. I, I don't see it as something that you I, I think you really need to take some time and take a look at that and um I don't know. I think now that we have a, uh, a fire chief, I think maybe that's something that should be worked on over this next year, and, and we have some serious meetings about that. Um, I know the deputy put in there that that, that ISO is. I'm going like I would like to see a letter from them saying that that, that is not going to affect this. Um, I, don't know. I think it's a big decision to sit there and. 15 minutes that we're going to sell off apparatus and so I would not be in favor of that. Well, we really didn't say it was up. We were going to just see what it would run. I, still not in favor of it. So I like some of the numbers that you've got on here. Um, as far as the, the ambulance I mean, I don't, it doesn't tell me what that ambulance was doing 59 times in 2023. Some of it was so going to the manpower vehicle. That's correct. Um, yeah, so, so some of it is ancillary uses. Is there a way to tell how many times that ambulance went because you needed all three? Or is it all because that ambulance was, we just used that one instead of one of the other two? And that's exactly correct. We don't, to we don't have the ability to put three ambulances on the road with staff. So, so when one ambulance is out for service, mm -hmm. you're down to one ambulance. Correct. 
Correct. How many times uh, do we do multiple calls? How many times? Yeah, how many times have we, do we run, if, another, if one analyst is on a call, how many times do we have another call? I don't have that number in front of me. That definitely happens, but we also have a very good mutual aid partnership with uh, the neighboring ambulance service. Uh, you know, that, that number is un well under 100. Uh, it's probably well under 50, but I don't have that exact number. Um, what else? Fire truck. Engine four. Um, also, went out X number of times, but how many fires did it go to, or how many times did it go? Yep. Just because you used that truck instead of a different truck. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, so that truck went out. So the entire 20, 2023, that truck went out 42 times. Uh, that includes, uh, previous administration used that truck uh, to go out of town, like they specified any calls, mutual aid will use that truck. Um, that truck's the oldest truck, it has the most miles, therefore it was racking up uh, maintenance bills. Uh, since, since I've started uh, in this temporary position, um, we've moved that truck to a reserve as needed kind of thing, not front line, and it's gone up 10 times. Um, and most of those has, it, it has not worked, you know, we haven't needed it as a fire bumper, it's just gone because that was, that was the truck that was there. So, so you, you understand what I'm asking, mm -hmm. but if, if we could get a list that's a little more specific of, sure. of what, what that truck is doing, why that truck went instead of a different truck. Um, I, I don't want to short the fleet by any means, but if we have, we've had, a former fire chief, deputy chief, tell us that we had more vehicles than we could ever use. Whether that's accurate or not, but I don't know, I'm not in the fire department. We, we have different teams from the fire part, department saying two different things. So I'm certainly willing to give this a little bit of time. I, I'd like the new fire chief to, um, not, not that I don't trust the acting chief, but I think giving the new chief a little bit of time, a little bit of time to weigh in um, try to get this data and we can make a better decision before we close out budget season. In my opinion. But we had a motion. I don't know if there's a second. I thought you made a motion to pull it up. No? Okay. I'll entertain a motion if anybody so chooses. So, will you, what you're saying is get the, the rest of the data mm -hmm. between now and the uh, uh, budget so what, what I look we'll to, make it what I would look to the town manager to do is we push the fire department budget back to whatever meeting we can push it back to I know that's juggling some stuff around I don't want to cause a big problem but I think it's important to give the new fire chief as much time to get her fingers on what's going on Sure. I mean, that's all fine. Just, just for clarity, we are the last on the 28th. Okay. So. Fair enough. If that's as far back as we can go, that's as far back as we can go. So you've got a couple of weeks Three. after you start. Fair enough. Good enough. Okay. More on that. Uh, any other discussion on it? Please, pardon. Yes. Uh, you guys just yeah. had some more questions about the K-9 program and the grant that we've applied for. Um, one of the questions was if we could work out possible rotating schedules with dogs with neighboring agencies. I reached out to know we've <coughs> in the sheriff's office and the sheriff. Um, they're both willing to work with something like that, but obviously some of the obstacles would be union contracts, things like that. But they are willing to sit down and try to figure something out. Um, Paris's dog is a day shift dog, 66, um, and then she gets called out for the rest of that. Uh, bringing up the union, I did talk to the union too to see how they felt about that position and how to identify it. And uh, they was pretty flexible with different options because I was thinking like a dollar stipend an hour. 
uh, which would bring they bring up to $2,184 a year for that one stipend. <coughs> Once the grant's done in three years, um, I, a rough estimate, and this is rough, I think it'll be under, but it was about $10,000 a year. And that, that would include um, the dollar stipend, vet costs, and dog food. Which I, I don't think that's too bad, actually, for, for what that is. The, uh, as far as when, the, when we have to respond to the grant, um, the next step for us would be um, to actually post that position to see who would want to be the handler for it. And then once I make my decision on that, they come up and actually interview the people that applied to make sure that they feel it would be a good fit for that for that position. They, they don't have to make the recommendation, but it's just something that they do part of that grant. <clears throat> so the grant really doesn't kick off until we take possession of the dog. <coughs> and as soon as the dog can get into the training would be next March. So we have some time to still explore that and, uh, and work on it. Any questions of the board? Comments? If you did. I'm, I'm a big proponent. Um, but scheduling the door now, yep. if, if one town already has one, and it, I'd say it's important because if you got three dogs all working day shift and none of them are on night shift, it kind of defeats the purpose of three towns having. So yeah, that's why we all. talked about coming um, up with some sort of rotation so, schedule. Um, yeah. And the casino, they found out about it and they're doing a fundraising thing in March for that. Uh, when I left the last meeting too, um, one of the people from the hideaway, they said that if it goes through, they want to do uh, some sort of a fundraiser also. And we've also got other vets that has said they would donate years worth of food, and that's on top of the green. So. I'm going to bring in a motion on this to keep pursuing, or at what point? Well, I think I think one of the glaring things is the collective bargaining agreement. We need to get that. If the board's supportive of this, I think that the chief and I probably need to officially reach out to the union and see if we can negotiate the terms of what this is going, you know, going to be. Yep. I, if we got one more year left. One more. One more year left. Yeah. So I mean, even if it was a side letter or whatever, we want you know, some sort of a, the agreement yes. to get us through. Well, the contract's July to July to June. Yes. Yeah. Not January to December. I don't think so. Looking at it. This is year two that we're in right now. Year three starts on July. July one. Uh, they got one more year, and then uh, actually they'll probably start negotiations. December. Yep. That's what we did the last time. Yep. So June 30, 25. Yes, that sounds right. Yeah. And you're talking it's going to be at least March. Before the dog and the handler can go to school. That'll be the next school that's available. They just started uh, this one now. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking, I agree. Is, it, is it that the handler works the day shift, or you, I mean, you're saying that whoever the right now it depends on who. Would I get mean, he was here something he really needed one because he's a day dog. You don't go out at night, or what? Do you, yeah, they would. Oh, they're on call. call them. Oh, okay. what I'm saying is that. Well, let's get a little confused there. So only work. <laughs> if you have a dog in Paris and you have a dog in the sheriff's office and you have a dog in Norway and a dog in Oxford, and all those dogs are on during the day. None of them work regularly at night. Right. Right. So we kill one with headlights? <laughs> no. <laughs> and right now, with Noah's dog, and dog, and with County's dog, and with Paris's dog, like I said, we, we've had to get a dog from Manuscott County because they're not available. And they're only available so many hours a week. Right. You can't, if that dog's hours are up, you can't work them like a truck driver. Well, it's actually like a truck driver, they only can drive so many hours. Cool. So the dog's gonna drive? Sorry. <laughs> so I think, I'm sorry, Dan. Yeah, I think we can go to the CBA, yeah. As far as even the call out pay and how that would work and yeah. rotations yeah. and hours. You have to have all stuff. those discussions yeah. with the Sorry. Which honestly, I don't foresee that being a big problem. They seem pretty open to it. So, and the different ideas that come with it. But I don't know you need to. I always let the, your work when you need to work schedule. So we just go on the way we 
try to write that in there. It's actually quite uh, straightforward. We've got um, renovation of the conference room of the town office, which is why we're here. The, they came actually today, not tomorrow, which is good that uh, we are down here today. They came today to start you know, getting things started. Uh, the real meat and potatoes will start on Monday. They will um, you know, be doing the renovations. We discussed the flooring and all that stuff has been figured out at this point, so I think we're in a good place. Um, during the time of construction, the end of the building will be sealed off and closed to the public and the staff. HVACs, just for those that concerned, it has been asked of me, HVAC <coughs> is going to be modified so that it won't circulate the you know, construction air throughout the entire building and it won't affect people in the lobby. Uh, the contractor will be able to use the entrance at that end of the building and for the public, anybody who's listening, right, if we can try and avoid that end of the parking lot just to give them their space, the roll-off dumpster will be down there and so forth. Um, so just give them their space. The other quick thing that's unrelated to that, um, <coughs> getting a lot of calls about the Payne Road, the Noble Road, and North North Farm South South excuse me South Farm, Town Farm Road being really muddy. Um, Jim, the highway foreman, is aware of this. He's been going out. He's been trying to address it. He's been doing the best he can. But with all this rain, it's just been soupy soupy, and, and it's been difficult. Um, but we're aware of those issues. We're doing our best to address those issues. There was a couple of washouts on the Rabbit Valley Road again from the rain this morning. Um, you know, again, sent the highway department out. And we made it so that uh, people could get out of their driveways, you know, in and out of their driveways at least. Um, Jim's been working on, you know, again, addressing those. Some of them aren't necessarily pretty right now, but they're passable. So um, aware of those problems, but addressing them. So that's what I had for the manager. Select my items. Yes. Yeah. Um, just in, in future job advertisements, uh, I think since we, I would say, severely changed the retirement, the benefit package for the fire chief, I think in, if we were to do that again, I really think that probably that, in my opinion, I think that really should have gone back out, re-advertised, because you might have had people that, because of the issue you know that, like the chief had that they weren't interested with that with that retirement. I I, I just think that on the for the best behalf of the town, I think that if been probably we should have re-advertised it once once that that change was you know was voted on by the taxpayers. Okay, just my opinion. I mean, it is a significant change to the benefit package. So. Great. Yep. Okay. Good. Good. I'm all set. Warrants a budget, Chairman. Money doesn't have to be here for the budget thing, right? Oh, she wants to be. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Here. I'll just dive right in. Dive right in. All right, so I've got some books here. It's the moment that everybody's excited for. Alright, 
So, we dig into this fun here. A few things I want to point out right out of the gate. So, we were. And before you go, this is a budget committee meeting, is that correct? Yeah, a joint meeting between the budget yeah. committee and the selectmen, yeah. We only had three members, so we don't have a quorum. Okay. So no action can be taken on our part. I just want to bring that to your attention. That works. I think tonight I'm just going to go over it so yeah, you guys get an I intro. I understand, but in case anybody should question it down the road, I want to be on the record, but <clears throat> this is not official for the budget committee. Okay. Informational only? Thank you. Works. you agree to that? Yes. I don't want to be fired. Okay. <laughs> I don't think there's any chance of that. All right, so when you look at that, look at this uh, proposed budget, there's a couple of things that I want to point out. Um, just looking at the cover sheet here, right to the meat and potatoes, you see an increase of $413,000 to the operating budget, and I'm gonna get into the reasons of why that's happening, um, or why that's proposed. That brings the total town budget to 6.1 million. Um, you also are going to see capital requests of about $625,000, and again, I'll get into the meat and potatoes of that as well. So you also see that there's a second option here. There's two departments. Uh, one, the police chief has asked for an additional officer, and then the also there was a selectman, not to put you on the spot, Scott, you had mentioned about wanting to include an additional uh, highway department employee when we talked earlier in the year, I thought. Um, you mentioned. No? Okay. Well, there was some discussion about adding an additional fire, uh, excuse me, not fire, but a highway department employee. And so that has been added to the highway department as well. So you'll see that there's the municipal totals of a 413 increase. Two new positions would be 160,000. And then that would bring the total increase to 573,000. So we'll get that out of the way. I won't bore you with everything here, but the big ones to note is the administration sees an increase of $137,000. The reason for that is we now have a full-time assessing agent, which we've all discussed and, and looked at. Uh, as far as COLA, that's also been included. What you're seeing for COLA raises is uh, I propose a 3.2% raise, which is the, you know, the COLA raise that you're seeing for Social Security right now. Also health and retirement are affecting this as well. The police budget, $75,000 increase. This $75,000 increase is due to the CBA agreement. It's also affected by, um, we've had a lot of, a few officers leave and new ones come, and that's had an effect there as well. Highway budget is, sees an increase of 44,000. The big reasons for those, again, uh, CBA adjustments uh, or increases or raises and then the road maintenance increase as well. One of the big things you'll also see is we have the mowing out to bid currently. So we've reduced the part-time mowing line. This list last year just worked so much better putting things out to bid. Fire department will see a $67,000 increase and this is uh, due to the payroll and also the benefits, specifically health and retirement lines. And workers' compensation rate for firefighters went up. We argued with um, Work, argued with me, with the uh, workers comp because they wanted they told us that we had to if they if a fire employee or EMS employee responds to fires even if their primary function is EMS we have to insure them under workers comp as a firefighter so and that rate is significantly more than an EMS worker so that's where that comes from recreation or excuse me I skipped the public safety buildings there is a small uh, decrease public safety buildings and that's just because of uh, a decrease in the fuel cost because of the fuel rates and so forth. And before I forget, the fuel is currently out to bid, but what we're just what we're projecting is a little bit less. So, um, increase uh, when we come to recreation, it says a minimal increase of two hundred fifty-six dollars, but that's kind of uh, misleading. Uh, what's going on with the recreation budget is like we did with the summer rec line, where we've been operating that out of the uh, reserve account. The, I've been talking to the rec director about the activities and the sports activities line. What she's asking is that we do the same thing for those two line items, which would allow, when she does her fundraising, it goes into that account so that she can kind of somewhat self-sustain these programs. And if there's money left over from the fundraising, it rolls over year to year so that can continue to, uh, to build. So that, that $12,000 that we normally would have in the budget will be asked for in the capital side. 
General assistance sees an increase $6,500, and that's uh, we've just had a lot more general assistance applications. And we still do get reimbursements from the state, but that's just our portion um, from that. Transfer station sees a $34,000 increase. Um, there was a decrease in payroll because we have some changes there, but then some of the new staff has taken some of the different benefits than what were offered or what was being taken in the past. There's also been some increases in tipping fees and equipment maintenance. For the sewer department, $23,000 increase. Uh, cola, cola in merit increases, electricity, those are the things that you see. Also, the north end sewer, the cost is up a little bit there. But again, just a reminder that is billed out and reimbursed. So municipal, the municipal, you know, municipal operations, we see a $33,000 increase there. Our liability insurance is increasing this year. The request for the library or from the library has increased. And also third party requests, in addition to what we saw last year, there's $13,000 additional ones being requested. Those are all listed under the municipal tab and you'll be able to see those. I clearly marked them as what's new. For debt, there's a $5,400 decrease and that's just because the road bond payment is another year year later. The other thing when you look at your book that I want to point out is that on the front you have your cover sheet that points out the things that I just said and you'll see the CIP or capital tabs throughout. So on the front behind the cover sheet if you flip to the capital page it's a list of all the capital requests that are being made this year by department broken down by vehicle over 10,000, under 10,000 and then um, facilities and roads. So when you look at each individual department, one of the things that will be different this year is that when we talk about, say, the highway department, um, we will go through their operating budget and then we'll kick into their, their capital budget and there's you know, documentation of what they're requesting and why and so forth. There's a lot of capital requests in here. One of the things that I heard from uh, some board members in the <coughs> past is that I was, as the manager, filtering out a lot of that capital prior to it getting you know to the board and in the process so everything that has been requested this year from department heads I've put into this you know into this capital plan so that the board of selectmen have and the budget committee can have the opportunity to look at those things and discuss them and, and decide what needs to move forward so I know that that six hundred thousand dollars is a, a lot of capital requests but I think there's going to be a lot of good conversations mixed up in there so under each department, when you look at that CIP, I have actually included the 10-year capital plan you know, so that you can everybody can see what it looks like and see what's in there. So also in your book, you will find the, the budget schedule in the front. Do you want me to dive in any more detail? Or is that enough to give everybody something to chew on for a little while? Where's uh, should be right in the front, is it not? No. <coughs> My little pocket like yours? Yep, it was, uh, didn't make it in there, did it? Nope. Henry's got one. <coughs> this is my, my agenda. <coughs> Chief, would you mind making <coughs> 10 of these so that this will be please? Yes. I put in my motion. Thank you. Chief, you mind. You also have one in your selectman's packets uh, too, if we needed to reference that. But the uh, the next the next budget meeting will be again here, and the things we'll be going over first on the 14th will be um, police department, public safety buildings, and right now the police chief is overseeing the public safety buildings, and then we'll also do the rec budget along with their their capital request. I noted on the schedule that. You know the, the non-department head budgets like administrative stuff, things that I can just do myself? I had those listed here and I figured we'd kind of just fill those in when we have have time. So Adam? Yes. If I remember correctly, last year it was made uh, and agreed upon that the library would be treated as a third party uh, request rather than part of our uh, regular budget process. Mm -hmm. And yet, I see that it's still listed under the uh, administration budget. You've got um, with the third party requests, uh, library, what did I? Third party requests on until uh, the next week. Oh, you, you are 100% you are correct. 
That's uh, my error. We have told the library that they need to be here, I believe, on the 28th of third party stuff. But I will verify with the library. I think we have two people from the library board here tonight. So can you pass along to the rest of your folks that they need to be here on the 28th, please? I didn't didn't want to let that slide by without bringing the attention to that moment because it was such a new uh, last year. Yep. No, I appreciate that. Sorry for the oversight. Anna. That's all right. We're given this time. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, I think this didn't change. Didn't change from the first and second. No. So I think we've got some, you know, discussion and some interesting choices to make ahead of us here, but um, I do feel, you know, feel good about the budget. I know there's increases, but uh, at the same time, I feel like it's a good budget. None of those 675000 capital are in the budgets. If it's owned separately. They, yeah, and they're under CIP. Yeah, they're separate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have a full budget committee, right? Just yeah, two of them aren't here tonight. It's, uh, Mr. Maybe seven of us. <laughs> we got, would you have the roster here? So yeah. Mr. Wax yeah. is uh, one of them. Yeah. What is it, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Wax. Uh, Sandy. Sandy, and Jeff. Uh, I think there was a vacancy. One, two, three is not here. Right. Yeah. So we have one open. Yeah. One, two. About five o'clock, please. I think is what we uh, on the schedule is five o'clock. So. Yeah, I'll drive, which is a really good 
Right, it's not developed. Well, that's one of my questions for them is if, if they were to be using that lot, are they planning on developing a road? Because that's something that we hadn't really looked at doing. So. And does those other two lots have access to that road? How do we, because one of them's landlocked behind the other, mm -hmm. which you can't do unless they have it. I thought that was just about crossing over that. I didn't. It got a little more in depth than I anticipated. I well, I couldn't sure understand anything he was talking about to begin with until then. I went in my packet to see what was in there, and then I still wasn't clear what he wanted until he said he wanted the town to donate it to him. That I understood. Mm -hmm. but he had talked about wanting to um, be able to, as I put in there, you know, use lot yeah. 13. I didn't realize that we were looking to. Donate a I think there's, I would like to, to have a lot more information about the total use of the land and how that would affect the other end of, uh, the other people that buy lots in there for their use to make sure that it's a compatible use for that area. Yeah, I mean, one of my thoughts is that if it was used for horses, does that make it like agricultural or something like that? And can that even be in there? I, I think that's something that we need to find out too, for zoning line. The King's new question, probably. I would think using one piece of the floor between that path and Skiavi, where it goes all the way through to uh, Ski Field, I would think putting it in that piece the reason the reason that he's interested in that is because he has an easement up to with his horse yeah, so yeah he, he either has an easement or he butts it one or the other yeah on the tail end of what yeah. is Skiavi drive so he that's why he's interested in it, or they are interested in us because they're trying to avoid rolling yeah. the road. Motion to sign the warrants. Make a motion we sign 72, 73, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it is. All those in favor? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Third. All those in favor? Yeah, I mean, the little stuff, we were just going to take it with us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're leaving the, you know, the chairs and that stuff here. Are you?